What's up guys? Coach Austin here with another Riv Yoga for recovery. This week, uh, whether you did the open or not, whether it's just the programming in the gym or you did the open workout, uh, I know a lot of us, myself included, have been feeling it in our lower back and the whole posterior or backside of our body. So this flow is going to be targeted on that exclusively. Back of the body, spine, lower back, mid back, upper back. We're going to hit all of that. All right? So let's get started. Come on to your hands and knees for tabletop. So when you set up in tabletop, quadruped or all fours, set yourself up so your hands are beneath your shoulders. The shoulders stacked right over the wrist. And then your knees stacked beneath your pelvis or your hips. We're going to start gentle with cat and cow. So as you breathe in cow, look forward. You could even lift your collarbones up, stick your butt up and back. And as you breathe out, like the hunchback of Notre Dame, you're going to round your spine and pull your belly up and in. And then reverse it. Drop your belly to the floor. Inhale, look up. Exhale, round your spine. Look to your pelvis. One more time through. Breathe in. Breathe out. Round. Okay, come back to neutral tabletop. And then take your right hand up. Thread the needle. A few counts here. Right arm through. Just getting the spine nice and rotated here. Breathe in. Breathe out. Come back to your hands and your knees. Left hand up, thread the needle. Thread the arm through. Left cheek, ear down to the mat. Keep your butt up. Gentle rotation and twist in the spine. Breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, come back to your hands and your knees, tabletop. And you're going to slowly lower down to your belly, right from here. Then take your hands by your chest. Keep your thighs down, hips down. Really gentle back bend here. Cobra, so you lift up slightly here. If you want to come up a little further to like an up dog, you can. But nothing forced. Just gentle here, putting some compression on the low back. Press your spine in towards your chest. Breathe in. Breathe out. We're going to come back to this pose in a bit. But for now, come to your hands and knees. So press back. And you're going to take downward dog. So lift your hips up. Now down dog, I want us to focus on the spine and our lower back today. So bend your knees here. Remember in down dog, feet about hip width distance. Hands about shoulder width apart. But now keep the knees bent. Drop your chest towards your thighs. Drop your head towards the floor. So you want plenty of space for the spine here. Let's let your head hang loosey-goosey. Sometimes I like to shake my head out. Yes, shake my head out. No, just relaxing and releasing the head, giving the little twist and rotation in the cervical spine, your upper spine. Okay, and the next pose, ragdoll. You're gonna walk to the front of your mat. Split your feet apart, hip width distance. You can measure two fists or so. Now bend your knees here deeply until your chest comes to your thighs. So I'm gonna show this on the side view so you can see. So notice how my chest and my thighs are together. Now that's most important Then instead of having straight legs, not so important. We want the chest and the thighs touching, okay? And with the chest and the thighs touching, you're going to drop your head towards the floor. Keep the knees bent. Hands can stay down, or you can grab for your elbows. Right hand to the left, left hand to the right. And the intention for this is we want the spine to dangle. That's another name for this pose. It's called dangling pose. And this is helping our spine 
Just be loose and dangle towards the floor. Uh, awesome release for the low back, an awesome release for the hamstrings. But keep the discipline, you guys, of the chest and the thighs touching. This is not about having straight legs. Not about the hamstring stretch. If you're looking for that, go somewhere else. We're really focusing on our spine, our low back here. Trying to be easeful in the pose. And if it feels good, maybe a little rock side to side, but keep your chest and your thighs touching. I'm gonna hold this for about a minute more. And if there's any strain or pull in the low back, bend your knees even more. That is not our goal, to strain or hurt ourselves. We want this to feel as good as it can. And sometimes that means bending the knees a lot. And trust me and trust the practice and the process that what you're doing is very healthy and beneficial for not only your physical health, your spine, but also your well-being mental well-being, emotional, spiritual. So good. I could hang out here all day. I don't know about you. All right. Good job with that. Okay, now slowly you're going to lift halfway up your hands to your shins and then find your way onto your hands and your knees, tabletop. Okay. If you feel a little lightheaded, that's okay. You're just going to sit back on your butt. Take your feet together, what we'd call like butterfly legs, almost like you, when you sit up for an ab mat sit up. Soles of the feet together, knees wide. You're going to take your hands to about your ankles or your shins. Now breathe in, lengthen your spine, the crown of your head up. As you breathe out, come forward with your torso and down. That's the action. So forward and down. As far as you can reach, your head down towards your feet. Now, some of us may not get far. Some of us may come whew, all the way down, our head towards the soles of our feet. And in this pose, we're allowing the spine to be in a flexed position. So we're taking the spine to a flexion. This is a tremendous release for not only the low back, we're also getting our hips in here, our groin. If you want to deepen the stretch, you're going to take your heels in closer towards your groin. That's going to make it a little bit tighter of a stretch. If you want to loosen the stretch up or kind of back off a little bit, maybe you extend the feet a little far forward and you come down. And about 30 more counts here. Now our aim is to relax as deeply as we can and breathe, get connected to your breath. Like what does that mean, get connected to your breath? Like feel your breath, be aware of your breath, be befriend your breath. It's always right here for us. It's like here I am. This is medicine for the spine. Okay, slowly sit up. From here, you're going to extend your left leg forward, bend your right knee, and take the sole bottom of your right foot to the inside of your left quadricep. Okay? Bend your front knee, your left knee, slightly. Reach your arms up into, uh, to the ceiling. And the action is you're going to reach up, forward, and then come down, bow over the front leg. If you can grab your foot, great. If you can't, all good. That's where you're going to stay. Same idea like when we were in the dangling pose. I want you to bend your knee in the extended leg, the left leg, as much as you need to so that you're not pulling and yanking on your low back and on your hamstrings. That is not our focus. Our focus is to let the spine be in flexion, but essentially bowing over our front leg, and holding the posture. So I want you to find that place where it's not too hard where you're fighting and struggling, but also it's not so easy that you're bored and you don't feel anything. 
And then once you have that place, like Goldilocks, just right, breathe. And just stay right here. Take a deep breath in. Full breath out. And slowly come up. And then switch your legs. So the right leg is going to extend out. Bend your left knee. Sole the left foot to the inside of the right leg, right quadricep. Bend again. Reach up. Inhale. Reach up, forward, and then down for the foot. Bend the knee as much as you need to. And let your head drop. You'll feel that, especially in the spine, maybe the, like the thoracic spine area, upper back, when you drop your head. Now breathe here. Few more counts. Lean in and stay with it. Less is more here, my friends. Less is more. You're getting so much just by holding the shape of the pose, stretching our body, taking it through these ranges of motion as a supplement practice to your training. Okay, from here, good work. Sit up. Last part of this pose, like a three-part pose, extend your legs forward, both legs long, bend the knees, reach your arms up, breathe in, reach forward, and then bow down. Try to grab for your feet. If you can't grab for the feet, all good. Bend the knees, maybe grab for the shins or hands to the thighs. Gently contract your core muscles, your abdominal muscles into your spine. Drop your head down towards your legs. Five or so more counts. Take a deep breath in. And breathe out. Through your nose, breathe in. Breathe out. One more time, inhale. Exhale. And slowly sit up. Ah, Take your hands back behind you. We're going to do what's called a counter pose or a counter stretch. Plant your feet down. Press your hands and feet to the mat. Lift your pelvis and your hips up to the ceiling. Drop your head back behind you. Press down, lift your pelvis up, breathe in. Slowly lower down and breathe out, okay? Now spin yourself around. Come to your hands and your knees. You're gonna walk your legs back and come onto your belly. For our next pose, called Sphinx. You take your elbows and forearms down to the mat. If your hands come off the mat a little bit, that's okay. And you want to imagine it's like train tracks, railroad tracks, your forearms, so aligned and uh, parallel to one another. Elbows beneath the shoulders. Mm -hmm. Now relax fully here through the lower body. And your upper body, you may feel this in your lower back, is it's a bit of compression. It's okay, it's safe. I'm just gonna hold here. Now the magic and the beauty of yin is that it's more of a restful, restorative approach to yoga. It's more easeful and more receptive. And especially if you're feeling a little beat up or a little sore after a week of training, a few days of training, 
This is a great addition to add in because it's um it's a way of promoting recovery without just sitting on the couch. It's like very healthy, right? You're taking your body through ranges of motion, you're breathing, regulating your nervous system with your breath. You're being still active, but in a way that's going to more or less restore, replenish your energy levels or your cup instead of draining it. Now, a few more counts here. You could stay as is in Sphinx, or if you want to go just for a bit more, it's called seal. You're going to press your hands down. I like to turn my hands out a little bit so that, like the fingers point towards the upper corners of my mat and straighten out the arms. And you can play with your hand placement if you're a little further or a little closer. That's up to you. But you want to press the hands down, lift your chest up, and press your spine in towards your chest. Stay here for 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, breathe in, 5, Four, three, two, slowly, good job. Lower down, turn your head to the left, gentle counter, bend your knees, windshield wipe your legs side to side. So windshield to the left, windshield to the right. Good work. Then take your feet down. Take your hands by your chest, the nipples kind of by the uh, nipples, hands, thumbs by the nipples, press down to the floor, upward dog or cobra, lift up, downward facing dog, take your hips up and back. Okay, great work, almost there. Come to your hands and your knees, spin your legs forward and through, bridge pose. So you're gonna come onto your back, Plant your feet down to the mat. Lift your pelvis up. Now, depending on what you have at home, if you have a block or like a little pillow or something that you can put beneath your low back for a little support, you can. If not, we're not going to hold this too long, but you want to lift your pelvis up. Lift up towards the ceiling. Walk your shoulder blades in towards one another. Hold this here for 10 Nine, press your feet down to lift yourself up. Five, four, three, two, okay, lower, down. Take your feet to the edges of your mat, wide apart. Fall in bridge, drop your knees in towards one another, and then move the knees side to side. Okay, from here, hug your knees in towards your chest. Give yourself a little squeeze in. And, and extend your legs in front of you. It's called, our next pose is called a, like a banana pose. So you're going to take your right foot to the right corner of your mat, your left foot on top of your right foot, like you're making a half moon kind of or like a C in your body. You're going to reach your upper arm, upper hand to the right corner, and your left hand to the upper right corner of your mat. So your feet stacked on the lower right corner of your mat, your hands stacked on the upper right corner of your mat, and then your left hip, left side of your body moving towards the left side of your mat. Like a little C, kind of like a banana shape here. Now this is a very subtle, subtle pose, but the magic in the yin is what we call the rebound effect when we exit the pose. So just stay here for a few more counts. How good it feels to replenish and recharge your body, your spirit, your energy levels. Okay, and then you just switch to the other side. So this time the left foot to the left corner, stack the right foot on top your left hand and right hand simultaneously both to the upper left corner. Take your hips over to the right. Take a little C shape here. 
Right, breathe in and out through your nose. Okay, take a breath in and a breath out. Come back to center. Reach your arms overhead. Last poses here. Now hug both your knees in towards your chest. And then take your knees over towards the left side of your mat. Your hips move over to the right. Supine twist. This is a great gentle stretch to do for your lower back. You can do this really at any time of the day, especially if your back is feeling tight. You just come onto your back here, do this little twist. It's a great to loosen it up. Sometimes after a workout, when I'm writhing on the floor in pain and like, oh, so I'll try to, especially if my low back feels it, lay down and just do this as I start to get my heart rate and my breath back under control. Another variation you can do is to straighten out the left leg and you'll take the right leg across even more. This is just a different option, but same kind of principle in the pose. And then switch to the other side. Oh yeah, that feels great. It's money for the low back. Oof. Take your left leg across. You can bend both knees and take them across. I'm actually going to do the left leg s across the right leg straight here. And then the subtle, soft twist in the upper body. Try to take your left shoulder blade down to the mat. I like to cactus my arms here, like goalpost arms. So the shoulders up or back gets a little rinse. The low back for sure is getting a nice rinse here. Getting some blood flowing. Just taking care of the body, your body, so that you can continue to do what you love to do. A little bit of maintenance goes a long way. Right, yoga a day keeps the doctors away. I made that up. Okay, <laughs> come back to center here. Oh, feel free to take any last movements that your body may want to take to feel complete. And then Shavasana. Let your arms and legs splay out. Our final pose. Close your eyes. And just let your body relax and feel what we call the rebound effect. How the body just starts to let go a little bit, release some tension, muscles relax, kind of melts and dissolves away. Relax your jaw, your hands, really soften, let go. If it even feels good, you can let it out of sigh, like ha, ha. Take a deep breath in. Breathe it out. Exhale. Roll to your right side into a fetal position. Use your right arm as a little pillow. Press up to an easy seat. Cross-legged seat at the front of your mat. Sit up tall, straight. Bring your hands to a prayer, thumb knuckles right at your chest. And we close our practices with an ohm, uh, an ohm or a deep breath together. That's up to you. If you're gonna do an ohm with me, you can, so take a breath in. Bring your hands up to your forehead. And together we bow forward and repeat the words. 
Namaste to close. Namaste. Round of applause for yourself. Awesome job. Thank you so much for practicing along with us. Um, if you're interested in joining us for in-person class, we hold rib yoga every Sunday actually out in the gym. And uh, it's a flow that we've designed to be targeted with the athlete in mind. So it'll be poses like we just did here. Uh, there'll be a little bit more of a warm up, dynamic component during the class uh, every Sunday. And they're all led in person by me. Uh, again, my name is Coach, oh, Coach Austin. I'm a certified registered yoga teacher and I've been teaching yoga for about five years now. And um, I found that yoga is a wonderful, wonderful complement to the training that we all do, especially here in the CrossFit gym, to add to our weekly schedule. And know that it's not meant to replace or take away from your training. It's really there to add to it, to supplement, to benefit you, and help you get more and more out of your training session. So if you're interested, hit me up, hit the gym up, Hudson River Athletics. We'd be happy to answer any questions. And we look forward to seeing you again soon. Thanks a lot, guys.